I've been working on code. There's currently a couple bugs still in the unreleased version that I said I was working on during our last meetup. One of the major things that I, I'm trying to improve is transients. Um, when M8 switches instruments on the same channel, like they interrupt each other, it's a little bit too washed out when they over when the two sounds kind of mix, crossfade between each other. Um, you kind of lose some of the transients, so I've been working on that. But yeah, how is everybody doing? Not everybody talk at the same time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't have to talk. But uh, I don't know. I guess we could. I could show off. Um, I want to show off trying to do um, recording, uh, sample recording. Because um, I don't think I really went over that before that I remember. But maybe I have. So I guess I could go ahead and start doing that. And then maybe, uh, I don't know if uh, Brightface or anybody wants to show us or t talk to us about anything. Or is it just going to be me solo this month or this week? <laughs> uh, well, I have ready the one of the tracks I uh, had put together in the last month or so. So I could do a bit of a dive into that. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. So I guess um, let me turn on my screen. Let me get this started. Uh, see them. Hopefully, you guys, can, you all can see that. Um, so I'm gonna make a super quick. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna make a super quick track here just so I have something to record with. Because I want to show off, um, I want to show off how to record external stuff that's being sequenced by the sequencer. So I'm gonna make a stupid little bass line. Actually, I'm not gonna use the macro synth. I'm gonna use the FM synth. I'm gonna make this like um I'm gonna make this let's see. I'm gonna make this um like a sub a saw with a sub bass, I think. I'm gonna attempt. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Whoop. Turn that down. C to D. I'll put little that's my sub. And it's my saw. see how quickly I could make a cheesy little riff. Let's not make it C. Yeah. So now I have something that's in this song. I'm gonna use external MIDI here 
and I'm going to switch my screen to main display. So I set up a VCV rack here um, with a bunch of, uh, <laughs> I started adding a bunch of uh, braids, but I'm only using one of them right now. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty meta to put a braids uh, as an external synthesizer or a mate. <laughs> so that should work, shouldn't it? It is working. Oh, I need to turn up my USB volume. Yay. Let's get rid of that. No braids. Just so right now this is uh just to be perfectly clear this is a midi instrument being sent out um to vcv rack which is running just a simple oscillator through a filter um and then that audio is coming back into the M8 via USB. So there's a bit of lag here because uh, uh, the VCV rack isn't running ASIO on this Windows machine. So the latency is probably pretty terrible. So maybe I just wasted all that time making that little line. But <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, sample it. But what I could do here, it's going to put up a wall of nothing. So I'm going to sample that into a new instrument. I'm going to set up a new instrument for the sampler. Uh, go to record screen. And you see there's a song row. Um, and then this number here is the what row on the song to start at. Um, I believe wherever your cursor's at, like if I have it on two, it would be two by default. Uh, but right now it's four. So if I click on song row, it's gonna start recording. Uh, uh, it's gonna start playing back the sequencer and recording that at the same time. So now I have that, I'm normalizing it. Cut off the beginning, because that that USB latency we just talked about. Crop it. Now I'm going to crop the end because I left it cycle a little bit longer. Whoa. Uh, these artifacts are just the the virtual <laughs> the virtual display has a hard time drawing all these updating all these pixels at the same time so it kind of freaks out but the real m8 doesn't have that weird graphical glitch you see there i think i could probably improve that in a later version i still think this is wrong isn't it yeah that's probably right it's hard to see exactly where that... Let me look at my real M8, because that's just a blurry mess. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. Oop. I need to save it. Um... Yeah, that's good enough. I'll save it as high. So now I have this sample. And that was, uh, so f with external gear, a lot of the time what I'll do, which I think I mentioned this before, like if I was doing a drum machine, I would set up a sequence of like every note that would trigger a different drum sample um, throughout this entire thing. Um, and then 
so I have a sample for every single drum uh, hit. I've done that before. Like I have, hang on, let me show you something. Sample, load, drums. No, it's in recordings. That's right. This Roland GM kit. Uh, which is a 64 slice thing. This is exactly how I did it, as I sequenced 64 notes and then just recorded it directly into the M8. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, where was I? Yeah, this guy. It's kind of cool now, though, is I could do reverse. made a big mess. It's perfect. That was too... Now, I probably need to time stretch this if I really wanted to have it actually do the transpose. It's probably going to sound terrible if I do this. <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyways that's my little demo um so the songs the sample recording thing which i think i went over in a previous m8 if i go back to that screen um there's basically these three record modes one's just start and it'll just instantly start recording uh one of them's arm which uses this this little, you can see this little meter moving around when I move this value. It uses that as the triggering start point. So it'll wait until the sound, the volume gets up to that level to start recording. And then there's the song road mode, which just starts playing back the sequencer. But the important thing to realize with the song row mode is it'll play back other synths when it starts doing that recording, but it won't play back other samples. Um, because it's currently s trying to save a bunch of data to the SD card. So we don't want to bog down the SD card with trying to read data, data at the same time. So any samples that are playing, I'll just mute them. Yeah. Do we have any questions or anything? Uh, real quick, how do you get the uh, zoomed in waveforms, or is that like automatic? I know you went over it yeah. before, but I kind of missed out on the first scope. Me. No, not that one. I know what that one is, and I'm not going to play it. So, left and right does this zoomed in view. Oh, and it looks terrible <laughs> on the virtual display. It just starts crapping out. No, I get it. Yeah, uh, left and right. It's like as soon as you, as soon as you like increment that, right? Yeah, That's, it's just, it just it's just like every more. other yeah. thing else on the M8, you know, uh, edit plus yeah. left and right is small increment, and up and down is large increment. So large increment, it'll do this, and then small, it'll zoom in and give you the zoomed in thing. Yeah, that's handy. I thought uh, at first there was like some kind of like key combo, which would be kind of annoying to do, <laughs> but. Yeah, that, that's a lot simpler. Yeah, I just tried to make it so it made sense as best I could, given the yeah. limitations of the interface. Uh, it has an undo as well, but it only undoes the very last action. <laughs> so just to keep that in mind. But yeah. That's my little demo slash presentation. Um, are there any other questions or anything?
So if anybody has any bundles they want to send me, they could go ahead and send them to me now that I can, I'll play after we're done messing about. But uh, Brightface, do you want to show anything yet or do you need more time? I could probably do something else. Uh, I think I'm okay. Um, yeah, I just got to set up the... I mean, it, it's all pretty much set up. I just got to push the couple of buttons and then do the thing. Um, Beep boop. Just give me a sec. Bloop beep blurp. Okay, that... What am, I, what am I streaming? Yes, that window. I mean, display, go live. Okay, here we go. How's that? Any better? Yay. I see uh, it's very red. <laughs> okay. It reminds me of like a, a DMG with the LED backlight. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. So can you hear all that? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Just trying to make sure that I have. So I'm going to play, uh, this song that has to, uh, it was a part of a, um, yeah, it was a part of a compilation, um, called, uh, Train Radio, and it was just released by Pterodactyl Squad a few days ago. And, um, yeah, it was basically what it is. The concept is that uh, there is a um, uh, just basically a bunch of tracks that are based off of uh, Japanese train melodies. So these are the kinds of melodies that play just before the train starts uh, heading off, right? So um, yeah, um, the the one I was doing was basically like this. Um, it was based off of like a 20 second melody that I've heard at a lot of certain stops. And so we just choose, we would just choose like certain ones to, uh, to uh, check out. Um, yeah. And so I had about like, we had about like at least a month to do this. Um, of course I, you know, I, was, I had a pretty busy couple of months. And so, um, yeah, I did not actually <laughs> spend all that whole of month to try and do it um but um yeah i i didn't have a lot of time but i was able to you know get the track ready for uh, this compilation so i'm just gonna play through it and it's not super long um but i'll just play through it and i'll just do a bit of a a, a dive into it okay sure. sounds good yeah so hopefully it's not too loud Does not seem to be. Is it playing? Oh, sorry. I just realized I had the whole um, thing muted <laughs> across all channels. Uh, just give me a second here.
Okay, so wow. that's the that was track. really great. Yeah, <laughs> it was really great. Nice. And I love the, the nice. uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. The train theme songs. I love that. Yeah, that aspect. How hopefully it's the actual melody that it's based. Yeah, like hopefully it's uh you might actually remember, but depending on like what, because uh, I know you've been in Japan, uh, Tim. Yeah. And you, so maybe certain melodies are like, oh, I actually remember this particular one, right? And so. <laughs> Uh, as it's as it stands, that's actually the one that plays at a uh, Koenji station, so that's probably why it might be familiar to uh, some of you. <laughs> so um, anyway, this uh, this track. Um, so when I was kind of presented with the idea for this track, I was like, okay, well, I I think I know which one of like, I mean, there, there's actually like like up to two hundred melodies that play throughout Japan, right? And not all of them are in, uh, unique to each station, but like some of them play at like some subset of stations to give a sense of like place and continuity, right? So, um, yeah. So when I was first like trying to, I guess conceptualize how I would go about it, um, it you know, and if, if you look at, if you kind of take a listen to the whole album, uh, what everyone else kind of submitted. Uh, you know, everybody's got their own approach. I, I felt it was pretty, like, um, important to just do the by the book thing. As in, you know, don't mess with the melody too much or, you know, deviate from it. So um, I actually started the song uh, just with, you know, the, mo the melody itself. Yeah, so um, I thought it was important to just establish that. And then to do that, I was like, okay, I figured... I try to emulate the uh, the instrumentation as much as possible. Um, so that initial instrument, kind of like a bell. Yeah, it, yeah, that is sort of like a bell slash xylophone kind of right, thing. Right, right. And I feel like I kind of got it about eighty percent of the way, and I thought that was like good enough. Um, if you, if you, um, what was it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was I actually had an MP3 sample of the like the melody as played at the station, and so I tried to like sonically reproduce that a little bit. Um, did you? And so you, I think did yeah. you play it back in the M8, or did you use like an external like refer? Like, was your reference in in your track, or was your reference just played from your computer? No, no, the references are not part of this track. I kind of listened to them separately, and I just tried to like hmm. you know do a bit of guesswork. Right. Uh, but it, in my mind, the xylophone sound is kind of like, it's, I would say it's pretty close to a sine wave, um, plus a little bit of like aberrations here and there. Um, uh, but it's like the, the sort of attack of it is kind of more of a, you know, if you kind of think about the sound of a xylophone, it's, uh, you know, it's a few registers higher and they just kind of taper off really quickly. Right. And that's kind of like the hammer strike, I suppose. Right. I don't know too much about the physics of uh, of an actual well, there, uh, there's xylophone, a, but you know that's, there's like yeah. the re the resonant frequency of the bell itself, and then there's like sure. all the weird stuff that happens from just the the hammer kind of vibrating through the the sound, and that that ends pretty abruptly comparatively to the resonant. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's sure. exactly yeah. So I mean, I'm sure somebody with a better grasp of the actual sonic physics behind it would mm. be able to really reverse engineer this a lot better but you know i i figured i did pretty well give, given circumstances but so basically i used an algorithm that's like um yeah just basically the, the main carrier is, is the d and then it's kind of like in parallel with another um carrier uh, signal that's like a little bit you know it's just it's it's tuned down pretty or it's tuned up a fair amount and also like turn down a little bit just to give it a bit of a beefiness to the like you know i was trying to give it a bit of a chorus quality to it uh, and then everything else it has more to do with the um the initial like bell strike than anything so so um, when, yeah, when and if you look at the when you yeah, did this when you did this and you chose the algorithm and stuff were you thinking of like two separate sounds that eventually get mixed together kind of thing but they are both kind of in the same vein well, my original plan of attack was that um, in the reference material I was listening to, like 
the, the xylophone had a bit of a chorus quality to it, right? So I figured I'd do like a kind of a dual carrier, but just kind of detune them a little bit. Right. But I didn't quite get the right sound I was looking for. And I think partly it had to do with the, uh, with the lack of, um, you know, fine tuning of carrier freak, like ratios. Like right. maybe if I had up to like four degrees of precision, but you know, that's like, you know, I, I chalk that up just to like, okay, well that's how the M8 is. Did you see the? This is totally sidetracking a little bit, but did you, did you see? Yeah. Were you there last last meetup where I explained how you could get even finer tune detail? Yeah, you mentioned that uh, you know if you kind of turn all the ratios down or if you turn them, up, if you, yeah, down, if you right? turn them up, if you turn them up, then that then that extra fine the you know everything after the decimal place is tw you yeah. know two times or four times more precise it has more precision the higher up the ratio or more yeah. I, don't know, I would have thought it would be the other direction because yeah. like the i don't i don't know how i guess the, yeah. <laughs> i don't know how the math works out but it does yeah so if, if you change I that think, one to yeah. a two then the the find the the fine yeah. uh stuff would be even more uh more fine yeah yeah i mean in practice i would think that if you turned all the ratio like the base ratio lower than the the, the actual frequency spe space between, you know, the uh, like uh, like a hundredths in of a ratio would be smaller, right? So, um, anyway, uh, but it, it seems like there's a couple of maybe the way that it uh, like you know the bit resolution of the resulting signal. I think there's mm -hmm. like some trade-offs there, but anyway, that was sort of my approach for like kind of like FM 101 for people who are just like, well, how do you get that sound, right? So. Um, as for the other, uh, the only thing that's, the only other things that are playing at this beginning section, um, are these literal, like, samples, and w one of them, actually, these are sample, are, like, uh, audio tracks taken from, like, previous Japan trips of mine, so certain clips that are, like, at the station, so I th thought it was pretty cool, like, Easter egg, in terms of, like, <laughs> hey, you know, these videos that I've kept for, like, 10 years actually have, you know, like I'm finding use out of them again for this track. So this one is just at a, um, yeah, it's just a sample. Yeah. Yeah. Whoop. Yeah, and then the other track, uh, track eight, you know, it's just, Yeah, and I, I kind of filtered each of them a little bit because of, some of them are a little bit bass heavy because of like, I don't know, just, you know, sometimes you don't want them, it to, there to be that much rumble when you just kind of playing referential sounds and stuff like that. And I layered them together because I was like, uh, just to, you know, <laughs> have a bit of a, a plausible deniability as to like, oh, you know, like maybe some real, you know, eagle ear folks are like, Oh, I know which station this is at. This is totally, you know, inaccurate for the station you're supposed to be on. You know, I'm not. I wasn't ready to have that debate with people, so I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna put a bunch of them together and just all those train you know, elitists out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I know there are a bunch because, like, <laughs> some of the feedback to this track was actually like, oh yeah, you know, I totally did like, you know, like uh, translated maps for like all these stations. I'm like, okay, this guy probably knows if I'm, you know talking out on my ass or musically or not. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, all right, so let's go to the main, I guess the main intro of the song. Whoop, whoop. Actually, I could do that first. That's just a, it's just kind of a riser arpeggiated, uh, yeah, and this one's not an FM um, instrument. Although I will say right, right off the bat that about 90% of the instruments here are all FM, so. Um, this one is just, just a kind of four part arpeggio. Um, yeah, and I'm uh, using a envelope, I think, or a cutoff, yeah, cutoff LFO to just kind of like, you know, filter it progressively higher. So nothing too much to that, but I felt it helped to uh, add a nice kind of like, uh, anticipatory kind of element to some of this stuff. Um, and just to add an extra button to some of the, you know, the symbol 
smashes that you know kick off some of the sections here. Um, I'm gonna unmute everything. Ooh, ooh. Okay, um, channel two is I think where I put in a bunch of uh, chord steps, and I have a few different kinds of these because. Um, yeah, I just needed a bit of variety here, but these ones are just kind of like single hits. And um, I purposely and thankfully, uh, you know, uh, maybe mercifully, I, I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself to like sound design the heck out of these chords, mainly because what I was going for was like a kind of 80s J fusion sound with a lot of sort of like DX7 type of stuff. So like, you know, timbrely speaking, it, it would set, I wanted it to have kind of that old school quality anyway. Um, so the, this is what it sounds like. Um, yeah, and uh, to do that, uh, basically, employed the uh, FM algorithm of like four carriers at once. So A, B, C, and D are all individual oscillators that are not modulating anything, but they're just like, yeah, they're just out there uh, individually. Um, the level and feedback parameters are, uh, I've overdriven them, I think, a little bit, and then I added a bit of feedback to make them kind of soggy. And then I would let basically the filter do the rest of the work, have a bit of a slow attack to have that kind of swell. Um, but yeah, beyond that, there's not that much else to uh, to these. Um, one thing that I was considering was, you know, like because I'm using the uh, the, the pitch effects to basically pitch uh, have like relative um, semitones up from this A sharp, for instance, right? To form the four part chords, the harmonies. Um, I, you know, I was thinking like, oh, you know, it'd be nice to control like cutoff and all that stuff, but I've run out of FX channels, right? Uh, so uh, I, I, there was a few, few people who kind of figured out that, uh, you know, if you kind of delegate all this stuff to like a table, and then use the table hop command to like, um, you know, call the same instrument, but like with a different chord structure, right? Like I, I totally could have done that. Um, yeah, I totally could have done that, but I, it's one of those things where I just didn't have enough time and, you know, uh, the, the kind of, uh, uh, what would you call it? The, uh, the restrictions I put on myself were such that you know, it didn't have to be super complicated with the uh, with the sound design of these anyway. So, it allows yeah. you more free, uh, free. It frees you up to just create random chords as opposed to just like the few static ones that are in the table, too. So it's yeah, like a... I mean, I wasn't super sure, like locked down right. on kind of what the chords were actually going to be, right? Because I was I, at this point, I was still like trying to figure out what would be a good chord progression that would you know extend the original melody or at least like you know, uh, twisted in a new way. But, you know, a lot of this stuff was still very form formative at the time I was writing this at this point. So I was like, okay, this is not the time for that. But maybe if I had more time, I probably would have done like a second pass through this where I'd be like, okay, let's, uh, you know, let's uh, 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 compile basically all these different chords into tables and then I could call them up later. And then it's sort of like, then it would be a similar process to like a lot of, you know, in a way, you, you, then you'd be able to conceptualize it like kind of like a, a Mega Rave mod, where you just like you don't really care what the content of the chord is. You just know that it's different, so you just call the instrument that calls the chord sample that you're looking for, and just you know pray that it um, you know does what it's supposed to, do. <laughs> or like yeah, it's, you know that it sounds like the chord that you had in your head, right? Uh, okay, uh, moving on. This part is the bass uh instrument oh i have to un unsolo the other one okay <laughs> Oh. 
So, um, trying, I was trying to hit that, like, that sweet spot of, um, you know, 80, 80s or 70s even, like, J-Fusion with those, like, really, like, crazy funk uh, bass sounds. The ones that are just, like, the slaps are just out of this world, <laughs> right? And so... Um, it's like an FM so slap that, bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, just for context, like, even before then, I was like... I was on a pretty big like Cassiopeia kick, and that's like one of the like the pre preeminent '80s like J fusion bands, and they were all up for that uh, this sound that sort of like you know bled, bled its way eventually into um, uh, you know a lot of the like future funk that you hear these days, right? So um, I was trying to really get this sort of slightly synthetic sound that would match well with like a lot of 80 cents at that time, but also have a, enough variety in it, right? So if you hear it by itself, it sounds a little bit like a, a little bit synthetic, but I think when mixed in with other stuff, it does cut through quite nicely because there's a lot of like high frequency components there. Um, in terms of the actual like FM settings for this, I mean, it's, I'm not sure if I can really, I think a, this was more guesswork than the other instruments were. Right, but uh, a lot of it had to do with like trying to figure out like what the richer high frequency content was and controlling that over time. Um, one thing that I was trying to do, one really subtle thing, is that I did add a bit of attack on it because that that one tick of attack actually gives it a character that's um, kind of you know uh, kind of human played. As if you know your the attack comes from the like the thumb pick of a bass or of a or, or a slap or pop or whatever, so um, yeah, um, I think that that's pretty important in giving it this kind of like slightly analog feel, and instead of where we're just where to start with zero, right? Like everything sounds a little bit too precise, and so you know that's kind of a creative decision that I think is that becomes part of the sound design, right? Uh, the other element to this was, uh, let's see here. Uh, sorry, I forgot where I was, okay. Um, yeah, there's not much else that's going on sound design there, but the important part is like, um, you know, modulating a lot of it, right? Because, you know, if you hear a lot of really good like bass playing, especially in that, in the, the, in that funk era, um, you know, there's a lot of ways to, and I'm not a bassist, so I wouldn't really be able to tell you all the nuances of it, but, you know, if you, if you're a studious listener or some of that stuff, you know that, you know, you got your kind of bit, you know, main, like, you know, um, you know, playing, you know, certain strings in certain ways. If you, if you slap or do a pull on, on them, like they get a different sound. Some of them sounds a lot more like a tacky, um, and, um, yeah, there's there's like, you know, the slaps are. I was gonna say, um, yeah, here I'm like kind of not super overdriving it, but one thing I think that does help is using the, uh, where is it? Uh, blah blah blah. The yeah, the the type of limiting kind of helps too because it sort of uh, changes the character. I find that like the sign one helps to give this sort of like silky quality when you overdrive it. And that I think that helps the style of bass here. And so, I mean, there's a lot of dimensions that you could you undertake here. Um, but uh, yeah, you can sort of hear the difference where it sounds a little bit more chorusy or, or a little bit like, you know, like as if you were to just, you know, imagine if you were to just like uh, clip it, right? It would kind of sound kind of distorted. And uh, maybe that's not what you want, or maybe that is, right? So, um, but yeah, that's kind of a bit of the base in the nutshell. Everything else is more kind of like just, uh, you know, judicious uh, tracking and, you know, putting in a lot of like, um, like rests and, you know, you know, killing some of the uh, anticipatory like notes that come before the slaps and stuff like that. So, um, yeah.
I'm not sure there's much else to go over other than that for the base. Uh, what about everything else? Uh, that is... I have about three channels of like drum stuff. Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna mute everything but the drum channels, and I think it's just like four, five, and six. Yeah. Yeah, uh, one of them is strictly a hi-hat channel. The other one is a, like, I think just for a uh, snare sound. Yeah, the snare sound is a sample. Um, yeah, and I just kind of use one of the, the quote-unquote stock ones. And uh, one thing to assist with that sound, like, uh, is that I think in the table, I pushed up the pitch just a little bit uh, at the beginning, just for an extra transient. Um, if you just kind of hear it like this. It's just a little bit more mushy, right? So that's where having the extra uh, transient helps. Um, and, and of course, I'm using this hop to just only only execute this once because this just loops back to the row one instead of the very top. Anyway, um, yeah, and then what else do I have? Uh, I, I'm not keeping track of like, oh, um, because it is kind of like a chip album, I decided to like have a bit of like rhythmic arpeggiated components to it. Need some bleep but bloop. This is, yeah, you need a bit of your blarpy blur blorps. <laughs> um, I think this, in this case, is just a wave synth. And again, sound design, there's nothing too complicated about this other than, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm basically trying to do like a SID sound here where you're kind of mirroring progressively like uh, parts of the, the original waveform. Yeah. And then the what's in the eighth channel is, what is this? Do I remember? Oh, uh, sometimes I'll put in like a sub bass uh, just to, for added extra emphasis. And here it might not be easy to hear, but uh, mixed in with everything else, it's 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 nice. It's nice to even have the uh, real estate to do these sort of sub bass like um, sweeps, because um, certainly in LSDJ you wouldn't be able to do that. And even if you did, you're limited by basically the how how nicely can a wave channel like do a perfect like sine wave, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Can I hear the Let's that see. line with the with the sub bass in it? Like sure. mixed. Uh, I'll, I'll put the one beforehand, and then actually I'll just go just before this one. <laughs> So I don't know if that's uh, detectable to you. But, yeah, totally. Uh, it it is in the final. It, it, by it the way, the, nice, the, it adds a little bit of niceness to the whole thing. Yeah, uh, and by the way, the uh, the track as it is on as it exists on the compilation album is just a straight render. I didn't do any post processing to it because I felt like it was important to to preserve that. Uh, there is a bit of limiting, but that's on the M8 end. Uh, that's just like. I was I was kind of using a bit of the uh, you know Mikey's advice about just like you know what just just have a bit of limiting at the get go like don't don't try and mix it beforehand because it'll inform how things are mixed as you're writing the song which I think is good advice um, I don't know it's like broadly applicable to like every kind of style or genre but in this case I was like hey I kind of like how it sounds so it just stayed that way and didn't have to worry too much about. Uh, like the mix afterwards because usually like if 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 something sounds unbalanced it's more of like in a lot of the music i tend to write it's more of a compositional thing than a uh you know 
oh, how many, you know, I think, sounds can you mush together? I think that's always the, to me, that's always like the struggle of electronic music in general. Is that mixing yeah. the fault of mixing or is it the fault of sound design, you know, in the process, in the creative process, the, the yeah. compositional process? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, in terms of the rest of the song, uh, I don't want to go too deep in the, like, the compositional decisions and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, sounds so great. <laughs> let's see. It uh, it really has that sort of like kind of outrun slash um, you know the, those '80s city pop albums kind of vibe. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to be able to like really nail that, you know. Um, so that was the, the impetus for doing this uh, track. Um, this, uh, sorry, uh, what is this? I don't even remember what this. Oh, it's like, oh. Yeah, um, I'll also add to supplement some of those chord stabs, also some like slower chord swells. And they basically are basically the, uh, said basically twice. They're, um, they're just kind of copies of the original chord stab, swell, uh, stab sound. And I just kind of changed the envelope on those a little bit. So this is a very slow attack just to like, yeah. I mean, uh, there's lots of ways to do this, like, in terms of you know, you know, pushing in the values for like the cutoff parameter here, but I was just trying to be lazy and just trying to like you know, uh, hash things up really quickly. So, um, yeah, and then in this sort of verse of the song, um, started started adding some like secondary percussion. Yeah, and those those congos are just basically like uh, those, those are samples. There's you know I didn't synthesize them, but at that point it's just like they're just kind of ornamental anyway. So yeah, uh, the original lead to this. Uh, just... Um, it it ended up being pretty chippy, but. That was actually not the original intention. I wanted to try coming up with some like DX seven ish like brace uh, brass tone, uh, and so I did have like a low pass filter on it, but it just didn't cut through enough, and so that this is what it sounds like with with the filter. Uh... <laughs> I guess it's more of a flute than a uh, brass, but it's just, uh, yeah, I didn't really like it because it didn't cut through enough. And I was like, okay, well, because this is at least partly like a chippy track, it's like, I'll just do the chippy stuff. So that was a bit of a uh, compromise on my part. I'm sure if I spent more time with it, I probably would have come up with something cool, but yeah. Um, and at this point in the song, um, I'm using yet more copies of the uh, the the chord uh, instrument, um, but these are just kind of like uh, tamped down a little bit just to be a bit more uh, of a soft pad. So, but it, it's really interesting because I at first I thought you know having the four operator uh, kind of four part uh, carrier sound would be like very limiting, but it proved actually quite uh, flexible in this situation. And then maybe it's part of the style too. I don't know if like, you know, if I wanted like a four part, like super saw kind of thing, uh, I think that would be a little bit harder. You would typically, I mean, the way that I would tackle it is to like have two channels of each two notes. And then each of those two notes are driven by instruments that have like at least two modulators or something like that, right? So like a two by two approach. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's, I don't know if there's an even more elegant way to do that, but that's the way you would do it without like sacrificing four channels for 
you know, some really uh, sonically complex instrument, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the rest of the song, it's, you know, structurally, there's the, not, not much going on there. <laughs> Most of the rest of the song is just like recycling individual components that were introduced earlier. Um, I wanted to go more proggy, but it's like that kind of stuff's very mentally taxing to me. So I was just like, ah, just finish the damn song, get it out for the album, focus on other stuff. So um, that was kind of my approach at that point. But at that point, it's like, uh, you know, the, the bridge section, it did kick out very nicely because of the, um, you know, again, it, it all has to do with the chords. And if you think about it, I wouldn't have been able to do this kind of style uh, without the extra like harmony that's afforded to me by the FM, uh, you know, synthesis options of being able to do like you know four part chords basically, right? Because then anyway, I would need something like if I had to rewrite this from scratch, I'd probably need like mod plug tracker to like because I'd need like sixteen channels or something like that. But to be able to do this like mostly on the device, and I. I didn't really do this uh, using the web display either. It was just kind of like, uh, it was the only way I could actually finish the song to actually sit my sit my ass down into a chair and just kind of go at it. Yeah. You ended um, up using mostly the web display to get it done? No, no, actually, I, I the, the same part of me would have oh. <laughs> used it. Right. But the, uh, the, uh, the time pressured part of me was like, look, if you, like you need to do this without distractions. Just go somewhere and <laughs> sit in a place and just work on this. And so, uh, yeah, I kind of stuck to it that way. Uh, if you wanted sixteen tracks, you could just get another M eight. Oh yeah. No I'm kidding. So what pray tell can I do <laughs> about that if I wanted another <laughs> unit? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, so I'm just going up through over some of the other comments. I don't know if I missed any questions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, and, and by the way, I haven't like, I haven't advertised too much that this is an M8 track because I think I want that to be kind of more revealed over time and just like, you know, I just want people to enjoy the, the piece of music for what it is. And in this case, you know, normally I'm, I like, I like it when people can dive into the technical aspects of it, but at this point, I was like, "No, I want I want to see what the kind of range of reactions are without you know hyping the platform too too much, you know." Um, yeah, I and, mean, at the and, end of the day, know, it's if, it's your artwork yeah. that you're trying to get done, not like show off a device or some yeah. BS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really more of like, man, you know, like I've been to Japan like five or six times, and this is more of like a piece of nostalgia, like for times when I could travel, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I think it's conceptually um, such an interesting idea, yeah. the whole, was it a compilation that it was part of? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a neat idea. And, um, yeah, I think so for those who have been to Japan, right? I think there's a certain, uh, yeah, the certain, certain nostalgia for those times and as well just like a certain attachment to it. And so I was, I was more interested in that uh, than, you know, actually putting the chip foot forward, as it were. You know, I just wanted to help evoke, you know, pleasant memories of traveling there. And that, so the, the track name is called Day Trip to Odaiba. And I've actually had a number of experiences on, on different trips where I've gone to Odaiba um, and to hang out with friends and stuff like that and just check out stuff. And, you know, like if you've been there, you, you know how, like, uh, how much, like, uh, how, like, What's that city in Evangelion's name? Like Neo Tokyo or whatever? Or did I just butcher that? But like, it's it's just got a very futuristic, like optimistic vibe to it. 
And so I wanted to capture that in the song. And as well, like, you know, one of my memories of Nodaiba is like shopping, right? And so part of it is like having that 80s mall, like shopping, <laughs> bouncy pop kind of a vibe to you. So that, that actually is part of the DNA of this tune as well. Um, but, you know, it, like, it was sort of like, okay, given that I want to achieve sonically a song that does evoke those qualities, can I do it with the M8? And, you know, and I'm happy to say that it's a resounding yes. So, um, yeah, thanks for it. Like, if you, if I had done this before, like the FM stuff uh, was integrated, I probably would have given up <laughs> at some point because, uh, yeah, or, or I would have had to do it in a different genre altogether because I was like, okay, I, you know, for the stuff I wanted to do, I need more from this platform. So, uh, this, thankfully, that's not the case here. I mean, this really shows the, like, you used all the engines kind of utilitarily to get, like, the objective accomplished, um, which I like. You know, yeah. like, when you said, oh, the, you know, the, these are, you know, I just use samples for these. But at the same time, the fact that you could use samples and could have FM and could all do, do all that stuff and use it all together where the end result is just uh, all has the same kind of vibe going on, I think is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it helps kind of elevate it to beyond like, OK, is this going to sound completely like a mega drive? Right. And if right. I had that intention, I probably would have pushed it in more than that direction. But I was kind of like, no, no, I think the thing I want to evoke is the sort of you know gleaming futuristic atmosphere right which is kind of like beyond um kind of what what the platform can do or at least you know depending on your like i'm not i'm i'm no pro at say like defla mask or you know gen mdm at all so it's like to to do that on those platforms would be incredibly daunting right because i'll be like oh, i gotta wrap my head around all the like technical platform limitations of this, you know, you know, the, of the sound chip. Right. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's my trickety track. Um, if you guys have any more questions, uh, just, I don't know, just let me know. Be glad to answer them. Thanks so much for showing us that track sounds super great. Um, is it, is it on Bandcamp? Oh yeah, I should probably send the uh, Bandcamp link. Uh, let me just get that. the the out The compilation is called Train Radio, and uh, for those of you who are super into the video games, um, the another neat surprise is that uh, you know if you know the composer of Gimmick, that's uh, Masashi Kageyama. Like he's this really uh, really chill and and. Uh, you know, peaceful and friendly, like Japanese guy who's in, you know, he's in his middle age and he's, he's kind of discovering just like in recent years, how like legendary his, like <laughs> his NES music was. Um, and so he has a track in this album too. Uh, I don't know how that was like that. That's pretty amazing. I don't know how they managed to get that sorted out, but um and his track is like the only one that's not actually based on a melody, uh, a, a train melody. It's just like, uh, I think it's just an original work, which is like, you know, if anybody has the free reign to do that, it's him. So, so do check out that, uh, yeah, that album. Uh, it's got a really cool uh, takes on different themes. Stylistically, it's all over the place, which, um, you know, I think it's a good thing. And uh, yeah, and I yeah, I just I think we all miss Japan and want to go back soon. And I'm sure that's a sentiment shared by everybody else here. Sad, sad story. Exasperated sigh. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to go in like yeah, 2019, yeah. I think, or no, I wanted to go for 2020 before 2020 yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great place. Some of the best food I've ever had. Anyway, enough uh, <laughs> reminiscing on cool times. Um, yeah, just want to pass it off to anybody else who... Anybody I, have anything else to showcase? Uh, I guess Mikey's here. Um, if you have anything you want to... Can you, can you hear me okay? Uh, your volume could be raised a bit. 
Okay, just a second. So, uh, I I'm in the process of uh, backing backing up my my M8 card at the at this very moment. I was listening to to Brian, so I'll be ready um, in a little bit. Okay, we... I could show some tracks that people okay. have submitted. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, Let's it sounds that. like you're uh, using your headphones as a microphone. I am using my headphones as a microphone <laughs> going into my M8. My M8 is my audio interface because I didn't have anything set Amazing. up. So I put this together super fast so I could talk to y'all. So yeah, um, <laughs> let me let me get that set up. No worries. I'll I'll play some tracks. No worries. Oh, also Tim, did you have? You said you had a couple of like new features that you're working on. I don't know if you. Uh, don't, like, yeah, they're each just other. Uh, none of them are really. None of, I mean, I already showed the features two weeks ago, like the the highlighting feature, you know, where it uh, has the track colors uh, or the, you know what I'm talking about. The chains have a different color if they have content in them versus mm -hmm. not. I don't know if you saw any of that or not, but um, did you? Uh yeah, kind of the smaller UI thing. So you, yeah. you post the screenshots up. Right yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and really, I've been trying to get the 32-bit output working correctly. As that and j just doing general like engine like sound improvements. Um, that are very. What do you call it when you're when you're uh, exponentially getting less and less uh, results as you go along? Um, <laughs> shoot, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, diminishing returns. Yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Because I'm, I'm like, I, it's going to be improved sound, but it's like so minusculely improved, like, you know. Um, <laughs> some issues that um, S brought up uh, like a month ago when you're wearing IEMs, you could kind of hear some artifacting as it as the sound like, as the amplification kind of trails off. And so I would clean that up, and then I added 32-bit output because all the synthesis internally is is 32-bit, but then uh, the DAC and the USB stuff is all 16-bit. So at some point, it all gets down converted. Um, but the DAC supports 32-bit, so I was just getting that stuff working. Um, right. Yeah, nothing super exciting, um, but yeah, you know, just polishing, polishing everything up. Uh, I. The, the next big change, I think, is going to be more help-related stuff. Like, I was thinking... I think I've been thinking mm -hmm. about, like, maybe having it where if you do, like, a two-finger, like, touch on the display, maybe, have it, like, pull up a help screen that's relative to the current screen that you're on, and it also lists the shortcuts that are on that screen. You know, maybe? I don't know. I, you know, I think there should be some extra help stuff that's kind of in there for people that aren't really used to trackers or are used to LSDJ style of a tracker. Um, yeah. As well as... Yeah, um, I think you want it to be... I, I don't want it to interfere with the original interface. So I was like, well, I have a touch screen. I could do like a two-finger touch or something like that to enter into that mode, you know, versus some mm -hmm. new shortcut that kind of messes up the normal workflow, you know? Just thinking about it. Can... Uh... Can a four finger touch launch uh, Wolfenstein screensaver? <laughs> it's gonna launch Doom. <laughs> just yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's just it's, uh, back of the mind stuff that I, I need to figure out. Um, that and maybe adding the, you know, filling in that real estate that's in the envelope screen with something new. Um, mm -hmm. I, which I think we've talked about, like either adding another LFO or doing um, key tracking assignments. Mm. But yeah, any of those kind of big major breaking changes they should probably do before the production units ship, essentially. So mm. that way the manual is has all the most recent data that's not really going to change very much, you know, and the and the user experience. Uh, like it would suck to bring out all those new units to the world and then all of a sudden, you know, there's a huge breaking change <laughs> after the mm -hmm. fact. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, I need to work on that stuff. I just haven't had time yet. Just on my off hours, like when I would find um when I find the time I've been working on the code. But mostly, you know, mm -hmm. these last three or four weeks 
a lot of it has been graphic design like i had to switch hats to trying to get the the new a new logo done and the website and all that stuff accomplished as well as getting just the production started for the pre-orders so yeah um but i could sh i i don't know if that answers it there's nothing to really show, I guess, right now that I, that I can think about that's like super new um, that I haven't already shown. I suppose it's a good. It's suppose. I suppose it's a good sign that, uh, like, there hasn't been a, at least as far as I know, like people clamoring for like new possibilities of features and stuff like that. I mean, let me know if I'm wrong on this, but like people seem pretty happy happy with the like breadth of functionality. Yeah. So far that it's like it, it would take some while for people to get really like you know, really uh uh, uh you know uh in, like introduced to it, right? Yeah, and there's some uh Yeah, there there's you know, there is a feature list of things. Um none of them are super big. The only big one is like what should we like should I bother at it trying to fit it squeeze in another LFO? You know, that that's yeah. kind of the big one. And I don't even know if I technically can, um, either because mm -hmm. of memory or because of CPU. Um, but, uh, you know, there's the real estate for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... Uh, and sometimes I, I really wish... Like an extra and, LFO. <laughs> yeah, and so when I'm sound designing, I'm like, oh, if I had one more LFO for this, it'd be so sick. <laughs> Always just one thing away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just never ends. So, I mean, yeah. Initially, when the the uh, when the beta units went out, there was a lot of user feedback. It was like a <laughs> overwhelming amount of user feedback. You know, <laughs> like one user <laughs> would submit like fifteen different changes. You know, like if you look yeah. at the the uh, change log from version point nine to one point oh, it's like this just mammoth list of stuff. Um, but now that stuff's yeah. kind of settled off and, you know, people are still suggesting things and sometimes, sometimes they're good suggestions and other times it's like, we well, just wait until you have the unit because <laughs> you might not need what you're asking for. Totally. But yeah, let me, uh, let me set this up and play some user submitted tracks. I think I'm streaming my screen now. Let's see what we got. I have to look up uh, what people sent. All right, so I got one song from Glooms, I believe, somewhere in here. I think it's this one, right? I think it's this one. Yeah. So the song's by Glooms, and it's called 170 FM Dollar Sign. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, that just died. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be using my beta version of this guy. Hold on a second. <laughs> That's hilarious. What a fresh creative decision on the songwriter. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I'm switching uh, M8s. I love this uh, avant-garde dial tone aesthetic. <laughs> so that, that, goes, that goes into the 32-bit change that I'm working on. I think there's some minor instability that I've been trying to hammer out. I must say the biggest problem with my current setup here is I have no debugger when I'm developing M8. Uh, currently, I have no debugger, uh, which is kind of a huge deal for a complicated piece of software like this guy. Um, you know, because when you have a problem, it's like, I guess I could blink an LED. <laughs> Or if something's a hard crash, I have no idea where it hard crashed at. You know. So let me, I'm still setting this up. Sorry about that. The song was sounding great, by the way. What would be a good place to start this off at? About right there. Okay, so I totally butchered that track. Um, I don't know what's wrong with this M8 either. Let me... I'm plugging, unplugging and plugging back in. This should be 134, so this should be uh, the current firmware. But apparently it played incorrectly, so I'm super sorry about that. It sounded 
phenomenal either way, by the way. So we could just call it a remix. Man, that sucks. I'm sorry about that. So it sounds it sounded like one of the tracks was out of sync or something. Anyway. Yeah, it's it sounded phenomenal regardless. So this next track I believe is by J I D O K. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your handle exactly, but it's called One Channel, and it looks like a One Channel track, so maybe this will play perfectly, wonderfully fine. That was great. Uh, I messed up. Uh, that was M B B M B B M M, the artist that made that song. It's a super cool one channel track. Hopefully it played okay. Um, yeah. For these meetups, this is a mental note for myself to not use the beta firmware <laughs> and have that prepared. Uh, so, hey, Mikey, how you doing? Are you situated yet, or you need more time? I assume with no reply that you need more time. Uh, yep, a little bit. Um, yeah, I was looking to see if I had anything to showcase, and I, I have only been working on pre-existing music, getting it recorded. I haven't really uh worked on any new like anything that's um outside of a few loops so uh, as that far sounds as, like, like me 
track. Yeah, uh, I've just yeah been 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 bouncing stuff, and um, I uh, I think the last thing that I made um, I made a 160 track with Boa Constructor, but I think I showed that off last week or not last week, but last time. I don't remember. Hmm. Um, actually, maybe does, does everything's a blur to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't even remember if I did or not. Um, so I, I mean, I could play it again, but, uh, like, I, like I said, I'm pretty sure I, I don't even remember, man. Um, okay. Well, if you, if you don't have anything that you want to talk about or, or show, um, I have a couple more tracks, um, from people as well. Yeah. Um, I can think of something and then, um, get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have some songs from 10 K and one of them was one of them was he w they worked with dot uh, ay so i'm preparing those right now sounds good um uh okay so so i did play it i think i think tom 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 did say that so, okay uh, so i i don't really have anything to show i'm, I'm so disappointed sorry. no i'm kidding it doesn't uh, matter <laughs> Everybody Shout had to homework to do. Who can actually I, like. I know. I didn't do my homework. <laughs> I didn't do my homework at all. I, I'm I just want to say shout out to the Aussie crew who can like uh, have shows again. I've been looking yeah. at some of the live footage and I'm like, uh, please make that happen here. That's crazy. Just the thought of everybody being in the same room together is so foreign to me now. It makes me scared <laughs> just to see that. I'm like, are you guys okay? I'm like, oh, wait, you probably are because you guys did what you were supposed to do. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I figured out um, I figured out why my other M8 crashed. Uh, I had VCV rack still open, and it was still sending USB audio data to that M8, and it probably just killed itself in the middle of that song. <laughs> Because I just I just looked at my VCV rack uh, application. It's like an error has happened, and it's it's now crashed. <laughs> so okay, so I'm gonna play a song uh, from. Tim, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Am I not oh, talking? Okay. I think he's in the process of uh, putting some stuff together. I think. Just check in. So, uh, can you all hear me? Yes. I hear, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, I was not audible for a moment there. But just on Discord, which is always super great. Hold on. I have to, I, I had to like disconnect and reconnect. Um, give me a moment. This is a fun little dance. I wonder why this happens. Hey, sorry. Quick question: Where can we submit uh, our bundle? Uh, you could just um, DM me, DM Trash Eighty over Twitter or. To, or uh, uh, if you you could you could send it as a zip file or whatever to my Discord. You could DM me, or or you could email it to me, um, or send me a link of some kind. Um. Does that work? Sounds cool. All right. Okay. Where was I? Am I still streaming? No. There we go. Sorry, people on uh, people who are watching via Twitch. I'm like juggling. Trying to get the Discord stuff to set up right too, as well. All right. So this song's by 10K. It's called Zonk.
That was excellent. Thanks so much for sharing that. I am busy trying to do multiple things at the same time. This is super fun. Um, I guess I should play the other track, huh? This is the 10K radio show. <laughs> I believe this track is the one that uh, .ay started. .ay. <clears throat> Wow. 
That was sweet. Sorry, that was excellent. I'm like clapping in my head while I'm multitasking here. So this next track is by Ian E. N. Cowell. Um, and it's called Switches. Again, if anybody wants to submit tracks for these, um, you could DM me a link to zip file as a bundle if you're using samples, and I will play it. That's that was great. Thanks so much for sharing. Sorry, I was waiting to see if there was more. <laughs> Should I play these tracks? Are these head are there any secrets down here? <laughs> no secrets. They're yeah. just little things to transition when I play live or you know, play shows. I it took M eight out recently. Yeah. And uh had a good time with it, so well, I, I could steal all your secrets here anyway. <laughs> go for it. Oh, dude, if you want to... So if you go to zero zero, uh, and open that up, and then go to instrument zero as well, and then head to the table. So I used these randomizations of different, like, the algorithms for the FM, uh, amp, and... Um, panning to ha. give the track. <laughs> I never yeah. thought about doing a random ra random algorithm. <laughs> Dude, it, it's great. It, it like gives it a glitchy, like like goofy ass feel. So I no, that's a, that's great. That's a great yeah. creative use of that. I never. I even yeah, for, I even forgot that algorithm had a command for it. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad it's in there. I've been using it nonstop. Uh, it's been really useful for like the generative stuff that I've been. Uh, messing around with so yeah I'd, lo just, uh, I'd love to see some of your generative stuff at some point yeah i'm still experimenting with it so well once i get it uh in a good spot i'll be happy to share cool well thanks very much for thanks so much for submitting that track i uh, i don't have any more songs everybody anybody interested in uh, submitting to uh a compilation of the the most random 
M8 tracks you can make, like using like all the different ways it could use, like random. That Dude, I would be so down. <laughs> that reminds me, uh, I need to come up with, I mean, so my tasks for the next couple of months, including making the units for that I'm, I'm supposed to ship out at some point, um, is I also have to come up with content for the SD cards. Uh, I don't know if we want to, if anybody's interested in doing some kind of like, if you want to submit songs that are demos that come with the unit, you know, it doesn't have to be a full song, but just little, little things here and there that I would, I would totally love that. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how we would want to work that out as far as, um, attribution and all that kind of stuff. But, um, it's just something to think about in the back burner. If anybody has any ideas, I would love to hear them. Um, cause obviously I'm not, I'm not going to ask anybody for free labor, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, uh, I'm all about, it's, it's kind of a catch 22 in a way because I'm selling these units, but I also love like community stuff. So there's like a weird fine line there, but, uh, um, yeah. What about if I might ask, would you be interested in, uh, also samples to come along with the unit like i have a whole bunch of uh drum machines i've been recently sampling yeah in, and uh, i'd be happy to share that with the community yeah well. totally um yeah I, I have my own library as well that i was planning on like figuring out and working into the, the thing and I, i've been going around my studio and sampling especially now that m8 has sampling i've just been just, mm -hmm. like sampling stuff into it left and right mm -hmm. um yeah but yeah that that's one of the many tasks is to come up with both uh, a little sample library, um, you know, that, that just covers the basics for people. And the other thing is any kind of demos to really show off um, what can be creatively done with the thing. Because cool, I imagine there's going to be, a, you know, some people coming into this um, off ground zero where they don't have any tracker experience or you know, LSDJ style sequencer experience. Um, and I know like back in the day, like demos really helped me get a grasp of trackers when I was first starting out. So yeah, I don't know. It'd be fun if we compiled a bunch of tracks like your, yeah, like your original demo where you just use as many of the different features as possible all in one track. And like float around different genres and stuff too. I yeah. think that would help people. Too. Mega demo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One giant ass. Uh, bunch Som of DJ stuff. Sometimes it's good just to have like a song that's literally like this is this is how, a way to do time stretching. You know, it's just like if you look at, I think Renoise does this. They have a lot of like little demos in you know when you down when you in, download and install it that have like just like the basic kind of tutorial style tracks that are pretty nice to have um i guess i guess with that stuff i could easily do that but i don't know if we want to do like user contributed content like either presets or samples and um songs of any kind um need to come up with a system or a way of uh of organizing it um if anybody's actually interested in contributing to that i think that'd be fun um if you're if you're still setting up a, a website or forum that could be uh something that could maybe we could have it in a more concrete spot as opposed to discord chaos yeah i don't i don't like using discord for this kind of stuff because it gets un disorganized very quickly um if if anybody has any i mean maybe a some kind of final resting place where everything is at like a like a google drive or or something of that nature you know or a dropbox kind of thing or i don't know what um but yeah forum is definitely in the future uh probably in the next month or so it's just all about manage time management at this point uh that that reminds me for those that don't know the Logo has been shifted into a different design, if you haven't noticed on Discord, as well as uh, the website's been updated, uh, dirtywave.com. It has the, kind of the newer look going on. 
just slightly changed. Um, on there eventually will be a form, um, probably, yeah, probably within the next couple weeks or a month. Am I, uh, am I allowed to ask? I, I know you have been working with some designers. Is that Minus Baby one of them? Uh, my, uh, yeah, he, he was one of the, he was the original designer that I was working with. Um, mm -hmm. and then he, uh, had some other stuff to take care of, I, I assume. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but the, the original like D came, was it came off from his logo, came yeah, from his yeah. logo. So. Yeah. I, I recognized, uh, his styling. Use his typeface usage, so I, it's curious. Yeah, the new logo, um, the new logo is kind of just a, a really simple DW that I drew up. Um, I when I worked with him, it was it was a, kind of a different logo. Uh, it was it was like the full text dirty wave. Um, but yeah, he he got busy, I think. So and then I worked with um. I think two or three other designers to try to come up, come up with something. And it ended up having to just make something really quick myself that kind of worked for what I was trying to go, go for. Um, well, like branding is super hard. So yeah, uh, it came together, came together. What's that? Uh, it came together. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. Man. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> super proud of it, but I, I'm frankly out of time and I can't, you know, pay a designer full time to come up with every idea ever. So it's also a thing of I don't want to waste people's time mm -hmm. as well um, due to my indecisions. But uh, okay. yeah, I, I just want, wanted a really simple, like, symbol, you know, that's easily translatable, very small or very big, um, that is recognizable. Like, mm -hmm. I, that, that's, that's all I was kind of looking for. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think the website looks better personally, but I don't know. I'm also kind of burnt out on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you've done an excellent job. Thank you. I'm trying. Uh, but yeah, if, uh, if people don't know, uh, orders, uh, pre-orders start in early, uh, April at some point. Um, and if you want to be notified and you're not on Patreon, um, cause you don't need to be on Patreon for this, uh, just sign up to the email list if you're not already, um, because an email will go out when the pre-order launches. And, um, yeah, I did, I don't, I don't know. It's interesting. Is it another point that we should probably, I should probably mention, um, is I don't think of the meetups as a way to promote product like it gets really muddy water <laughs> i don't know i'm so used to being uh artists like everybody else who doesn't get paid for stuff so i don't l like the idea of like i kind of feel awkward about it because i don't want to make this feel like free advertisement for a product like you know i'd rather have just a basic community for us to hang out and kind of learn learn the the ropes of this kind of stuff um I don't know if that means that I need to step down at some point or somebody else take over or, you know, I, I don't know what we should do about that. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I also find it just super fascinating how people use the device. So, and, yeah, th this gives us the opportunity to do so. Am I crazy? Or does any of this make any sense? I don't know. I don't think you're crazy. You're crazy, but it is a different. It's it's completely independent of this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, what you're saying is reasonable. It's uh, it, yeah. it's the rest of the time, you know, no concern about. It. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think it, uh, it would be good to have a discussion about like, well, you know, the, even just the word meetup is kind of a catch-all, and so mm. uh, maybe it might be worth thinking about like if. You know, you know, it's partly a branding thing, partly a an item of focus, right? Where it's like, yeah, certainly there is value in people sharing stuff, like uh, their tracks and all that stuff. But maybe that can be sectioned off into something else. Um, in terms of like sharing knowledge, I mean, it might be 
it might be simplified or streamlined if if there was like some sort of like you know imagine if there was a youtube like tutorial series or something like that just kind of the basics of like hey if anybody you know needs to go through that uh just check out that you know youtube playlist or something like that and then yeah. come back here and you can it, be part of that conversation there is on the to-do list there is um doing video tutorials i was planning on maybe hiring somebody to do those um once i have some <laughs> revenue <laughs> um like an official place for just like you know this is how to do this one activity and you know it's a five minute video kind of thing just break it up into little little bite-sized pieces that people can kind of click through sounds like you need an influencer not really i hate that word so much does uh dirty wave have a tiktok that I can <laughs> no i actually uh so bit shifter uh josh mentioned like i went on face i like never go on facebook but i went on facebook like a week uh, ago and they and he mentioned like oh yeah i just signed up to tiktok blah blah, blah. <laughs> just to just to get my name yeah. and i'm like oh yeah that's right that's a good idea i should sign up to tiktok just so i have my name yeah. available and my name was already taken but <laughs> oh no that sucks it's like just would to... you would you like to be trash 81 <laughs> No. <laughs> trash 80 official you know it started the passive trash aggressive yeah. war yeah. trash 80 underscore one i think that would be cool yeah it's actually uh that's funny that's that's exactly the reason why i signed up to twitter initially like you know way back in the day when yeah. we all probably did was like somebody's like listen you either, you either should sign up to this or i'm gonna sign up and steal your name <laughs> just a friend of mine <laughs> said that so i'm like i guess i'll sign up and at least yeah. I have my name. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that that's anyway, uh, yeah. that that and the manual actually. Um yeah. if there's a user friendly kind of technical writer out there that knows this stuff, um because I have to I have to write the manual or I'm going to commission somebody to write it with me. Um so if anybody out there is listening that think thinks you're up for the job and that's kind of your skill set. Um, I'd love to chat with you. So, cause taking all this on by myself is a terrible idea and I keep doing that. <laughs> it's just like the design thing. Like I tried to get a designer to do the designs knowing that like, I'm going to drive myself crazy trying to get that done. Um, and I'm really trying to reach out and see if I can have other people commission other people to actually help me. Um, so yeah. If anybody's interested in any of those things, um, we could chat about it offline. But Sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, I guess that's jobs, it. Jobs, I jobs. guess that's it for the for the meetup unless uh Mikey has something to show now. Oh no. You uh, had you had um, ten minutes. I don't know. I I'm 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 putting together something right now. Um no. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh I, I did not have anything prepared. Like a fool. I was too busy mopping. Yeah, and I liked it. I liked the this there was some discussion on the I don't remember which channel that was. It was one of the M eight channels about um composition stuff um i feel that like maybe we should cover kind of that stuff at some point too um yeah i myself am not like big into um chord progression style music theory um I, I have, crap I, I, <laughs> yeah i have i have zero music theory knowledge at all i just uh you know I, what I notes to, sound good together I, yeah <laughs> note note sounds good um, I, I have to Google scales if I really want to, like, if I really want to write in a specific key, I'll just Google. You only need, you only need one, <laughs> you only need one scale, you only need one scale, and then you just use the global transpose. You know, that's <laughs> honestly not the, not, not the good idea. It works fine, trust me. All right, me. so, so my musical heuristic is... Am I cringing in the moment or not? And that's really just my guiding star. Um, everything else is just technicalities, right? <laughs> How much does this make me cringe? I think yeah. that that is the key, though. I think it's like for me, all this stuff's the same, like design and and music and all that stuff, where you have to either be one of those lucky people that have natural talent whatever that means, um, to tell how bad they are. 
you know, so they could they could see how bad they are, or or you learn that skill set over time, because that to me is really what it's all about is is knowing how bad you are. Because if you know how bad you are, you know how you know why good things are good, and you're at least yeah. uh, this is me projecting, but this is how I see things for myself. Like if I could tell that this thing I'm doing is bad, then I have room to improve. And if I can't mm -hmm. tell that something I'm doing is bad, then I can't improve. You know. Yeah, I mean, one thing uh, I was thinking of doing, it's just, it really depends on how much time I have or not, and it's leaning towards not, but just, you know, like, or if somebody were to do, like, hey, let's cover one pop song per week, or, like, just one song that's, like, well-known, at least somewhat, or that is, like, easily reproducible, and to see how one would do it with, with M8, right? Because then that would relieve the pressure of, like, needing to come up with stuff from scratch right yeah that, that's probably a great idea um i was thinking about doing that two weeks ago and then i and i realized i couldn't really do it because of copyright stuff yeah like i was like i was listening to a random old depeche mode song and i'm like oh this would be cool to to redo an m8 oh i'm gonna live stream this i'm like oh, i can't <laughs> we could do something uh, i think we talked about before is um like more more sound design stuff like how do i make this sound with one of the synth engines not specifically just the the fm which we kind of did once you know how do i make a super saw answer use sauce form but you know what i mean we you could like listen to like some track and we could try to replicate the the sound using the available tools be a cool one Yeah. Yeah, I think um I would like to I this goes into this goes into kind of my personal life in a way, <laughs> roundabout way, is that I never have time. Like with these meetups, it's always such a last minute thing. Um and something like that I feel like if we collect you know, if if I or whoever had some time to like collect some things that would be fun to try to recreate on the M eight, you know. <laughs> but it's always like everything everything is always such last minute but anyways I, I, my point was that uh i need to like start creating a schedule <laughs> for everything uh yeah, i was thinking about that earlier today like i haven't had time for music or anything else i've just been like working i'm like you need to you need to but kind of maybe plan out your days a little better so maybe for this next one, I will dedicate some time during the week to figure out what to do um, with trying to cover some topics on the meetup. And I think that's a great idea because we, we talked about that last time, I think, too, like trying to like figure out, a, you know, show how to figure out a way of emulating something else. Um, I'm pretty sure we talked about that at some point. Yeah, I think I think that's why I was thinking about it. Yeah, and when we we just never had the time to. <laughs> so yeah, as a enough time, as a random meme uh, to help me learn M8 and get used to writing in trackers again, I ended up writing uh, the intro for Jump, uh, Van Halen song, uh, and uh, I'm proud to say that M8 can do Jump. It, it sounds pretty good. What synth was was that a Jupiter eight? I don't know. Yeah, I know it sounds corny as hell though, but uh, people love love to see if their synths can reproduce that sound. It's like every <laughs> cover band's like favorite thing. What was that, Mikey? I'm I'm pretty sure it's an Oberheim. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. I'm oh yeah, it might be an OB OB something, oh. right? Yeah. Yeah, it, I remember it, it was some event. I I. I, I I remember it was like some famous vintage synth. I just don't remember which one it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the Oberheim can do beautiful things. I think it, they just literally took a preset, though, and were like, good enough. Yeah. All I remember about it is that at some point, he, he didn't have the synth anymore and used uh, stems from the original recording. But uh, during live shows, he'd play the the incorrect sample rate so it wouldn't be properly tuned oh wow yeah, it'd play out of tune it was, it's great <laughs> i love that that's a terrible side that. story <laughs> but yeah um 
yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna promise myself to take, dedicate some time for the next one so we have some more things to talk about um and i also want to get that form kind of set up and launch uh yeah but thanks everybody for joining this week and hopefully we'll have one in two weeks time from now uh again uh the pre-orders launch sometime in april so maybe by next time around that's already taken care of <laughs> exciting yay sounds cool man super pumped thanks uh for doing this tim yeah no problem and thanks thanks everybody for showing up and uh contributing uh songs i really like what people have been doing